I'm Miss D, and I'm an author. The author is a person who writes the words in the book. And I brought, I created Moby Pincher. The illustrator is Daniel Myers. Daniel's nine years old, and he drew all the pictures in the book. Crawfish are crustaceans. Can y'all say that? Crustacean. That means they have gills so they can live in water and breathe with their gills, and they can have lungs like we do so they can live on land, and they can breathe on land. Isn't that pretty neat that they can do both? Now, they live in a house called a mud house, and this is what a mud house looks like. This is a real mud house. It has a hole in the ground, and they dig down into that hole, and they bring out little pieces of mud, and they make little balls, and they stack it all around that hole just like this. Now, they're very, very smart. They know when we're going to have a lot of rain, so they build this mud house up very high. You know why? They don't want that water to wash down in their hole. So if you have a crawfish in your backyard, you don't need a weatherman, do you? Outside, the cold raindrops came down harder and harder, and the wind blew stronger and stronger. It was bending this old moss-covered tree all the way down to the ground. A bad storm called a hurricane was moving across Lake Pontchartrain toward the swamp. Now, in this eye, it's very calm. There's no wind, very little rain, and you might think the storm's over, but it's not. It's going to come around because it's swirling, remember? Now, the second part of the storm is this part that's right around that center eye, and that's where all your strongest winds and your strongest rains are. Moby takes those giant peaches, and he gives one big push, and he shoves that off into the water of the bayou. Now, it took all Moby's strength to push that boat through the water. That wind was blowing against him, and the rain was hitting him so hard in the face he could barely see. Now, finally, after every crawfish was safely in the boat, the rain and the wind slacked. Now, Moby saw a high spot on the bayou bank, and with all of his might, he gave one last great big shove, and he pushed that Piro boat up onto the bank. <coughs> now, as the eye of the storm passed over, remember I told you the eye was very calm, the wind and the rain came to a complete stop, and the warm air was heavy, and it was eerily silent. So what are they going to do? They quickly jumped out of the boat, and they dug holes in the dark brown soft soil. And as they carefully peeped out, they were happily surprised to see a beautiful rainbow shining through the misty rain. I'm the biggest, kindest crawfish in the South. I've got a lot of friends I can't do without. Four friends back here that Daniel actually drew in the book, and he hid these in the book. So you have to hunt through this book to see if you can find them. Now, these are all insects. That means they have six legs. But we also have a spider. Is a spider an insect, guys? No. A spider has eight legs. So he is a what, Daniel? Arachnid. Arachnid. That's right. Can you stand up here, Mr. Spider? This is Spencer Spider, Lulu Ladybug, Tebow Bumblebee, and Cuz Caterpillar. All right. Now, this is a fishing spider. Spencer is a fishing spider. Spencer can actually run on water. They can, he can also go, go down below the surface of the water for about 30 minutes looking for a minnow or a tadpole. He's from the nursery web spider family. This is a stump, a real stump. All of these are real stumps from cypress trees, which is a very strong wood. These trees live all over Louisiana, and a lot of trees have moss in them. It's very, very resilient. The Cajuns used to mix this with mud and make houses. They put it inside the walls as insulation. And I understand that in New Orleans, there are houses there that are over 100 years old, and when they've washed this out of the walls, they said that the moss looks just like it did the day they put it there. That's how strong and resilient it is. Also, they make mattresses. That's just what the Cajuns slept on. They slept on mattresses stuffed with moss. Now, this is a cypress knee. Some of them get as tall as I am. And nobody really knows what the purpose of this cypress knee is. You can actually cut it off like this, and it doesn't hurt the tree at all. And Miss D cannot draw at all. So Daniel came over to my house one night, and he said, Miss D, I know how badly you draw. So he said, I brought this book over, and I made it for you. I want you to get a pencil and paper and see if you can help me draw Moby. So I did, step by step. And I was so excited because when I ended, I did actually draw Moby. So I started taking this book to schools with me. And the children would come in, and they would take pencil and paper, and they would draw Moby. And they got so excited about it, they wanted to know where they could buy this book. So we stuck the book in the back of the hurricane book. Welcome to Crawfish Town, USA, home of Moby 
Our dye came from the mayhaw berry. This is what a mayhaw berry looks like. It looks like a little apple. People used to scoop these, or they still do in April. They scoop them up out of the water with nets, and they make mayhaw jelly out of them. This is mayhaw jelly, and it's really, really good stuff. Now, I made dye out of it, and that made the red dye. This came from the huckleberry. They also make jam out of huckleberries. And this is what the huckleberries look like, little bitty tiny. They look like a blueberry, but they're much smaller. And then the third dye came from the sassafras root. This is a sassafras tree. 